Well, we're gonna take a video of the puppy. Video of this little puppy here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, finally, we are going to be working on, we're gonna put two AZX front struts on the Datsun in preparation for the new wheels. I'm excited, stay tuned. My Datsun is special. No, it's not because it's baby sh avocado green. It's because this car has already been worked on a little bit by the previous owner. It's got lowering blocks in the rear. This is the stock Datsun strut that's already been modified for these like slide over coil over sleeves. Once I get it out of here, I'll show you a little bit closer kind of how this all works. Over here, on the engine hoist here. This is a used 280ZX front spindle that I picked up from Pixfab Garage. I met that guy on Facebook Marketplace and I bought the engine, transmission, and a whole bunch of other stuff for this Datsun from him. He lives in Ohio, about eight hours away from me. And I gave him a deposit and he held on to all of this stuff for me for like two months while I got my plans in order to make the trip over there. And then me and Steve 2.0 drove all the way over there to pick all of this stuff up. We loaded it up in the car and drove it back. Without further ado, this is the 280ZX front strut. The neat thing about these, they actually will bolt right in to the Datsun 510. The main benefits are, if you look at the stock Datsun 510 brake setup, this is a solid disc, so not even vented. That's how you can tell that these cars are really light. I think this brake rotor is about the size you would see on a moped. Just stepping up to a 280ZX front brakes assembly, not only are they larger, but they're also a ventilated disc. Not to mention, I believe the caliper is also better. Anyway, from what I understand, the basics of how to get this pulled off is you basically need the lower section of the 280ZX front strut, and then we're gonna convert the upper section from a standard coil spring to the coil over setup that's already on the car. That's probably the question I should answer first is why can't the entire assembly be moved into the Datsun? The main difference between the 280ZX strut assembly and the Datsun 510 is the size of the coil spring. This coil spring and this top hat will not fit in the Datsun. So what you need to do to be able to use the 280ZX front strut is to change the top half of this strut assembly over to the Datsun stuff. Smaller diameter spring, smaller diameter top hat, that's what fits the shock towers. You can see here's the weld. We're gonna cut right above that, all the way around with a cutoff wheel. And we're gonna actually remove this spring perch from the strut assembly. Once we've cut through this spring perch all the way around, we can then come in here and grind this off. We won't do any of that until we've cut the spring. Then I can pull this thing apart. There should just be a single nut here on the top hat. That will allow the top hat to come off. Then we can take this whole thing apart. This is the strut body assembly, right? Up here, this is the aftermarket coilover sleeve. Okay, so right here, I think it's one split open ring that was put over this shock tube and then welded in place. And that is what the threaded sleeve of the coilover actually sits on. Uh, between the spring and the top hat up there, that's kind of what holds the coilover sleeve in place. What I'm gonna do is essentially replicate this on the uh, 280ZX struts. I'll show you what I'm gonna use for that. All right, so if you look right here, this may look like your average two inch inner diameter black gas pipe. And if that's what you guessed, you're right. I'm gonna use this to create two new sleeves to slip over the 280ZX struts in the front. I have a bandsaw. I'm just gonna cut two slivers out of this I'm gonna use that as my new stops. I'm gonna weld them on there. So I was asked by a subscriber to make a video of cleaning the Datsun. If you're wondering what I'm eating, peanut butter filled pretzels. Yeah, they're pretty good. There, look, it's clean. In all seriousness, we will be doing a full clean on the interior of the Datsun. My wife is super good at that stuff. I'm gonna see if maybe I can get her to help me out with that. I don't wanna do any cleaning on the inside yet because there is still a little bit more stuff that might have to be done with welding and grinding and all that. I do still have a little bit of body filler to spread right back there at the back of the rocker. So there's gonna be sanding involved and a little bit more paint. We're gonna hold off on the final deep clean for a minute but I promise it's coming. You'll get a full video power washing this thing and prettying it up to the best of my ability. Let's start by grabbing the struts here. 
Holy cow, these things aren't light. I mean, this is super easy. Anyone can do this. Oh my god. Yeah. So, first thing I'm gonna do to take these apart is cut the springs. I do not feel like chancing death or dismemberment by trying to use my strut compressors. I am just gonna nip these with the cutoff wheel really fast. All right, there you go. Just as easy as that. One cut was enough to get this entire assembly loose. So just have to pop this nut off and then the top hat will come off. All right. Well, I guess 14, that's way too small. What do you think? You think that thing's gonna come off of there? Or you think I have to put a, a vice grips on the shock tube? Comment down below, you think that's gonna work or not? <sighs> 19 is too big. 17 is the winner. Let's see if that works, huh? It's not gonna work. Oh my god. You see that? Oh, there it goes. Hold on. Top hat can come off. Here's a strut bearing. Bushing or some sort of thing like that. That goes together like that. Here's the upper spring perch with uh, I'm assuming what used to be a shock boot. Pull it straight up, it'll come off. That's too easy. Oh, I see. There's a clip. Uh-huh. Well, if I'd have known it was that easy, I would have just done that. Didn't have to cut it apart. Neanderthal. Okay. So, that's number one. I'll get you guys in here a little bit closer. So you can probably see this big nut right here. That's the nut that holds the actual shock tube inside the strut assembly. So... What I'm going to do now is very carefully, with the death wheel, cut right above this ring right here. And cut right above that all the way around to get this spring perch off of here. Cut just around that lip all the way around, a couple of healthy taps. spring seat is now separated from the shock tube. If you were doing this and you wanted to stay extremely cheap, if you could cut the lower spring perch off of the 510 strut, you could slip that right back over this tube, seat it right up against this weld, and then tack it back or weld it back onto this strut tube and then you'd be ready to go. I am gonna do, I'm gonna reuse that coilover setup that's on the 510 right now. So I'm gonna get this spring perch off of here and then I'm gonna grind this weld down. To get the spring perch off, it's actually catching on this nut. I'm gonna just pull this nut off of the top. My first idea is to use a pipe wrench and I may actually have to put this thing in the vise. It may not actually come off this easy, but let's try it, huh? Now, I'm wondering if pipe wrench will do this. <laughs> mm. Okay. I do have a giant channel ox. Try that. Oh. Okay. Can't seem to get a good enough bite on this thing. <sighs> Alright, getting nowhere, getting nowhere and fast. I wonder if this will be a heat situation, if we're going to need heat for this. Now, it turns out if you just clamp it in the vise like a man, or a woman, or anything in between, doesn't matter, whatever it is, crank it in there like you mean it. This is the retainer nut that holds the strut assembly into the strut body. And you can see it's leaking oil. This is also the seal. I don't know how well you guys can see that. So there's a seal in the top here. That seals the strut to the assembly. But now, our spring perch can come off. Ta-da! Okay, so here's the old weld. You can see I cut past it just a little too far. So anybody that's doing this at home, this spring perch is about 14 gauge thick. It's not very thick, so you don't have to go very deep. 
I may regret that. So the trick is, once this uh, upper nut is removed and there's a little seal in here, the only thing holding this shock into the strut assembly is a O-ring down in here. So if you pull that O-ring out, out comes your shock assembly. So I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see in here. This is the original shock housing. The replacement shocks actually drop right into this tube. They're a sealed unit. So you don't have to worry about filling this with new oil or any of that stuff. I think we're all good to go. I did a little bit of Googling, made sure that I had what I needed here. For those of you who are gonna do this at home, uh, you can use pretty much anything you want, including just a bit of weld here for uh, the new coilovers to sit up against. But if you're looking for something like an actual sleeve, this fits almost perfectly over the shock tube. Now I'm gonna get to grinding this weld down. Then I can pull the strut out of the 510. We can do a little bit of comparing measurements and stuff. Got that weld ground down. You can see here that I did actually cut through the strut tube, so I'm gonna have to tack this back together. Not a big deal. Guys cut and shorten these all the time. I am going to now pull the strut off of the 510, get some measurements to see just how far down the strut tube that comes. As I said before, uh, this strut assembly is pretty much dangling freely. The only thing I have to get rid of is this brake line. I'm just gonna cut that because I'm gonna put all new brake hoses on this anyway. And then it's three bolts on top and this thing should just drop right out. Slam my, uh, my mortar mixing tub, and don't worry about that, there's some rags in there. That's just the shock oil from when I took that apart. Because this whole brake system has to be redone anyway, we'll just uh, snip this guy. We'll just snip this guy. Should get a bigger cutter. There, that's gonna leak a little bit. Now we can take this out. Let's see if my guess was right. Yep, right socket and the wrong tool. All right, yeah, don't hit on the Makita cordless uh, hex drive impact. I've had that thing for 14 years. It was a gift and still running strong. It is, uh, it is old and tired, it's still a brushed motor, so don't use that thing around any open gas fumes. Set that on the ground. What's the over under that I'm gonna lose this hardware? Always happens. Okay. Here's the uh, 510 strut assembly. So I'll get this up on the bench. I'll show you guys what the comparison looks like and then we can get this thing taken apart. If you look, I don't know how easy it is gonna be for you guys to see this, but these are the two strut assemblies kind of laid side by side. So what I'm gonna do is just take a measurement from the end of the strut housing to the top it looks like 16 and an eighth. I measured the same thing from here. And that one looks like 17. There will be a little bit of a drop already, but what I think I'm gonna do to give us the most adjustability is look from the bottom of here to the bottom of the coilover is exactly 11 inches. So if we do the same thing, we'll slide our sleeve down and weld it so that the coilover sleeve slides down to 11 inches. And that should give us more than enough adjustment. It kind of looks like he was riding with this in the middle. So I think, because this strut tube is overall longer, and by 7 eighths of an inch, if we put this sleeve in the same place, if the same place relative from the bottom, the whole car should be an inch lower. Yeah. I think before I talk myself into too much more of a knot, I'm gonna pull the top hat off of this and actually get a look at these. Wouldn't you know it. Gonna have to hold that with a vice grip. Let's hope that's enough, huh? Okay. Stuff. 
stock 510 top hat. There's the nut. And this looks like the upper isolator deal. How's this held on? Okay, that's how that goes. So top hat, there's a bearing, lower seal kind of thing, then the spring sits over that. And now here is the coil over sleeve. So that together makes a very, very simple setup. You can see the evidence of where this was already modified previously. So right here, you can see that this strut tube was actually cut and ground, and then this looks to be like a piece of a main bearing or rod bearing or something that was expanded and welded on in place for that coil over sleeve to sit on. I just wanna do a couple of measurements between the two here, just to make sure that we're gonna put the coil over on the 280ZX strut in the same place. Just in case anybody's curious, this is why 280ZX struts will not just go right into a 510. Here is the factory 510 top hat. Here is the 280ZX top hat. Now, it is possible, I think, yes. So, the bolt pattern is actually the same. So if you wanted to, you could take the 280ZX top hat and trim down the diameter of the top hat and it would fit in the Datsun 510 strut tower. So if you didn't want to do any of the modification like I'm doing, you could simply just cut this down with a cutoff wheel and a flap disc until it's the same diameter as the 510. So it looks like you're cutting off, I don't know, probably half to three quarters of an inch about the whole diameter. And then this top hat on that strut would go right into the 510. So here's what I figured out. With the coil over sleeve and it's the middle of its adjustment, so that'll give us two and a half inches down or two and a half inches up from the strut assembly from the bottom, that puts the upper ring of the adjuster nut here on the coil over sleeve at exactly 14 inches. In order for the 280ZX strut to offer us the same adjustability, the top of this adjuster nut here has to be at 14 inches. If we put the sleeve right at about 14 inches, we are overhanging the top of the strut assembly. And if you remember, we do have to fit this nut in here. Yeah, so that nut will not actually fit inside that coil over sleeve. So, with this nut all the way in, because this is what actually holds the new shock inside this housing, this coil over sleeve will not come past it. Unfortunately, that is gonna leave us about a half inch lower than where we were with the 510 strut. That's okay, this is a coil over. We do still have two and a half inches of lift out of this, but this should put us very, very close to where we were with the 280ZX struts. What I'm gonna do is mark this, cut my pipe, put it on here and tack it. And I'll actually mock it up in the car once I get the wheel to make sure that this is gonna be at the right ride height. And if not, then we can buzz those tacks off and either move this down or move it up. I'm not sure if we'll be able to move up much higher than that because of this nut. So that might be all we get out of it right there. All right, I'm just gonna mark this. I'm using a pick. You could use a Sharpie or if you're really good at this stuff, like Casey from Casey's Customs, you could use a scribe. And I have one, left it in the house, along with a ton of other tools. That's where I need my sleeve to butt up to so that this thing can ride right there. This guy, right here. This is a new jig that is made by Hercules, which is a Harbor Freight brand. And this is a Bauer portable bandsaw. This jig here, it actually allows you to run this like a miter saw. There's a fence right here with an adjustable, so you can adjust this to different angles to get like a, what is it, 60, 45, and 30 degree cut if you want. Uh, this bracket can be set up to hold like a Milwaukee port band a DeWalt port band the Bauer port band It's really, really easy to set up. It is missing the clamp, but I do have that. I'm gonna use that to cut a couple of sleeves out of our, out of our gas pipe 
and test fit the coil over. Got two rings made. And essentially what's gonna happen here, this ring is gonna come down and nail right there. I will weld this in place so that it doesn't move. And then my coil over sleeve can butt up right against it. Man, that's the first time I've had the GoPro run on a battery while I was filming. I'm gonna clean this up, clean these up, remake this mark after I've flap wheeled it, and then get this in place and tack it on. So, got the top end of this tube just welded back together. I do not think that our coil over tube is gonna fit over those. A little bit of grinding on those just to put them back together, but this is going to be our new perch. Uh, I'll pick back up when I've got the other side done and I'm, I'll get the new struts ordered and then I can finish reassembling this. I have new shocks right here. I will put the link in the description. I got these on Amazon. It also has the part number. These are replacement drop-in shocks for a 380ZX. So these are Excel KYBs. These are not, these are not great shocks, but they'll work for what I'm doing. New shock <clears throat> slides right in to the old housing. And then there's like a tapered washer. Here's a new replacement nut. So that goes in there, at least I believe it does. And I'm guessing that you just crank this thing down, holds the new shock in there. I actually wonder if that uh, spacer or that washer is necessary. I don't think it is. All right, so without that spacer, this nut runs all the way down. So I don't think I'm gonna need these. This is kind of what the mock-up looks like right now. And obviously the coilover spring here is a lot shorter than the shock. So it is gonna to have to come down. The shock will compress and then everything will line up. So I don't know if any of you, else, uh, any of you guys noticed this, but when you make your mark, yeah, just go ahead and weld on the wrong side of it. So that coilover sleeve is too far down so I'll cut these tacks back off, move this sleeve up so that this thing sits right below the top of the shock, the shock tube there. Gently tap that. All right, there we go. All right, so if you can see, here is my mark. I originally put the thing on like that. It needed to be put on the other side. Of course, why would I check that? Should be right there, just about like that. So, whoops, my bad. I'll retack it there. Okay, so put the coil over sleeve just flush with the top here. This guy fits in here. But that nut can run all the way down. Good. All right, we'll rock with that. Coil over spring. 
and now there's the top hat and everything else. All right, so here we go. All right, so this might look a little bit strange just because the shock is taller than the spring and it is a little bit loose at the top here. So don't worry about that. I've got it mocked up on here. I'm gonna throw it back on the car, check that everything looks okay. I may throw a jack under the spindle just to bring it up to ride height, see what it looks like. All right, so for the last 30 to 45 minutes, I've been trying to mock up a newly welded coilover on the car. The problem I was running into, the tension rod here would not bolt up to the steering arm or the spindle, if you want to call it that. What I found out was, and maybe Dotson guys already know this, this is the 280ZX steering arm and this is the Dotson 510 steering arm. Now the ball joints are different. This is an aftermarket ball joint. That might be why. I think to make this work, I'm gonna to have to use the Datsun 510 steering arms. I mean, it seems like everything is identical other than the fact that the 280ZX steering arm is actually shorter by a little bit. This one actually has a little bit of a kick out here where the 280ZX does not. These two bolt patterns are the same. The Datsun 510 steering arm will bolt to the bottom of the 280ZX strut right here. So I'm gonna swap the Datsun 510 steering arm, and this already has a steering arm spacer to correct bump steer. So I'm gonna reuse those, put them right back on here, and keep slamming this thing together. Five minutes after that we have the suspension mocked up on the Datsun so here it is everything's in place now obviously we're at full droop so no tension on this coilover right now now that I know all this stuff is gonna fit together and work I'm gonna do everything I did to this side to the other coilover or to the other strut assembly I mean I'll get it mocked up on the other side of the car and then I think it's finally time to show you guys what I picked out for wheels. All right, so camera ran out of battery again. Yep, so I finished the driver's side and the passenger side. Uh, passenger side is mocked up, driver's side is mocked up. I just have to put the lower control arms in. Then I'm gonna put this thing on the ground and I'm putting the wheels on, let you guys see them. So I'll pick back up when I'm ready. I know this video is getting a little bit long, but I promise you it's gonna be worth it. I got the coilover set up, the two EZX front struts and coilovers mocked up in the front on both sides. Suspension is fully hooked up, cross member is back in the car. So finally, here's the wheels.
Think about a time I almost lost you I know, I know I was lost too Had dreams and I lost a few In flight we enjoyed this view Floating on the same wing There's some flight shit window See knock feet, you're my sidekick Always wanna run, can't find no one to run with All these young kids wanna party screaming Come with But you won't take their advice You make your own Came here to live a life, make your own I'm just being honest, don't need those clones Got my back, cover it with steel Might go skydiving with my wheels Shine Alright, so finally get this car on the ground On the wheels For those of you who are wondering Yes, these are SSR Formula Mesh Actual JDM, legitimate three-piece wheels. I got them off of a really nice guy in the Chicago area. He was super cool. Met us on the side of the road, and actually, I didn't pick them up. Believe it or not, Steve 2.0 picked these up for me. He was traveling for work. Anyway, for those of you who are inevitably gonna be curious about the fitment, here's what I went with. Our 15 by seven plus one millimeter. I was looking for zero. These were plus one, they came up. They work perfectly. The tires, are a 195 60 15. Now, we are touching tire just a little bit here in the rear. I think these are a little bit too big. So what I'm gonna do is change out the lowering block in the rear end to pick the rear end up like an inch. I think that'll give us enough clearance, at least for a little while, just to ride around. In the front, things look pretty good. Obviously, this tall tire is hurting us a little bit, but I think we can make these tires work. The tires are almost new condition. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to just take those off and throw them away. But anyway, I am so freaking excited for how this car looks. I can't even tell you. I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. This is a dream car of mine for a long time. And I don't know about you guys, but I always get motivated after I pick the wheels for the car. Now I understand this thing is a complete mess right now. However, a ton of the fab work has been done. A ton of the stuff has been figured out. Now we get to go to the next step, which is sorting out the engine, figuring out a little bit of body work, maybe a little bit of paint match, just so that I can get the doors back on, bolting the seats in, stuff like that. I'm really happy with the way this car turned out so far. Just to answer this question ahead of time, the Gold centers on these wheels. I'm actually going to paint those black. I'm gonna pop the centers out of those wheels and have them blasted and powder coated black. I think that'll make the car look awesome. That's what's gonna happen with that. Thank you all so much for watching. I know that it was a little bit longer to get this video out from the last one. Uh, believe me, it's tough to keep on working on this stuff all throughout the week and the weekend when we got stuff going on. I am so excited for this car, I can't even stand it. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. All that stuff. More to come on this thing. I'm gonna keep on working on it as much as I can. Again, thanks a lot. See you in the next one.